welcome to Tuesday Chatter. Never sure that should be craft chatter. Because I could be talking about anything, couldn't I, if it's just chatter? Anyway, it's not important right now. Okay, so welcome. Here we are again. God, these Tuesdays come around really quickly. So what am I going to talk about this week? Well, I've seen all sorts of conversations going on this week. I have to say, I haven't seen one particular conversation that's jumped out at me. So I've picked um a subject which i thought oh this is relevant to everybody so i want to know why selling crafts is so hard because it is isn't it i mean it's not an easy thing to sell i mean if you're selling something that somebody needs that they've got an urgency for if it's a oh i don't know a cream that's going to fix eczema they have a need because they need to fix that eczema they want something that's going to help soothe it and and make it feel better or if you need something for that's going to do a good job of cleaning say you've got something that's stained your carpet so you need something that's going to clean that stain off really easily so you have a need there's a want and there's a desire to have a product that fulfills that need crafts art pretty things they don't have that same need the need is much more it's treating yourself it's having something you like it's much more related to the amount of disposable income somebody's got at a time than it is down to I need it anyway yeah so I hope I'm ringing a bell here I hope I'm making sense so this is the reason that you have to take a long-term view with your customers that this is why it's all about building up that relationship because somebody's going to see you whether it's on facebook or somewhere else they're going to see you somewhere whether it's a craft fair it doesn't matter where they're going to see you but they don't going to need what you do at that moment in time now if they've got enough disposable income they don't have to worry about it they can just treat themselves whenever they want to because they can fantastic that is your ideal customer because they're not going to think twice it's just oh, i like that i could have that i will but if it's somebody who really appreciates what you do and wants what you do, but actually they're on a budget and the budget doesn't cover that at the moment and it's a step too far and oh, I want it, but I can't quite justify it right now. Those are the people that you want to stay in touch with. Those are the people that you want to be getting onto your email list and that you want to be following you on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram and anywhere else that you're being seen right now so that you can get back in touch with them when they have got the disposable income can you hear that fly i've had a fly coming i'm going to carry on ignore the fly easy sudden to not ignore the fly except if it lands on my nose then i might struggle right but the point being that you need to have that relationship with people so that they are aware of who you are, so that when they are in a position to treat themselves and they feel they can justify that purchase, that you're the person they think of. So I have so many things on my want list at the moment. It doesn't help doing the Handcrafted Marketplace weekly craft videos and deliberately looking for people that we go, wow, about. And we, I want that, I want that, I want that. Now, if I bought everything, well, wow. I, well, I'd be absolutely skinned. We wouldn't be able to have food on the table, but I'd have you surrounded by some gorgeous, lovely things. But what I am doing is I'm making a mental note. I'm, I'm aware of the fact that I want to buy from these people. I'm aware of the fact that actually I know who does that, I know who does that, I know who does that. So when I'm ready, I know who to go to. The point being, you need that with your customers. You have to take this as a long-term view. Unless you're selling really cheap and cheerful that people cannot not buy now because it's a bargain, that's the only way you're pulling immediate sales. But if that's where you're at, then you're probably not making the money that you need to make. Occasional sales, fine, but not ongoing. You don't want to be the DFS, the constant sale of that people then just don't believe anymore. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sales have to have a legitimate end date. They have to come in and they have to go out. Otherwise, you still don't have an immediate call to action. So you need to have a place, a system that people can stay in touch with you, that people can get in touch and they can appreciate your work and they can love what you do and they don't feel bad that all they can do at the moment is say, gorgeous, brilliant, love it, because actually one day those people will turn into your buyers. 
when they're ready. Now, it might be they buy for themselves. It might be they buy as a gift. It, the purpose they buy isn't the point. The purpose is that they love what you do and you have to stay in touch. So how are you going to keep that relationship going? And that's what your marketing needs to focus on. Because very, very few people buy the very first time they see you. In fact, if you, the stats for if you've got a website, if you've got your own website and you sell off your own website, it is, I can't remember if it's half a percent, I think it's lower than half a percent chance that someone will buy on their first visit to your website. The first time they see you, they don't know you, they don't trust you, they might go, wow, I love what you do, but you need to get them to come back and back and back and you need to see this as a friendship, as a long-term friendship if you like, where you get to know each other a little bit more, they get to trust you, they get to know you, and once they've got to know you and they trust you, when they are ready to buy what you want, they will come, what you'll sell and what you make, they will come back to you. Okay, I hope I've made sense. Well, I know what I'm saying makes sense, I hope I've put it across, across clearly so that you've been able to understand me. But yeah, it's all, that's why selling crafts is so hard. It's hard because it's a long-term process. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. And it isn't your time scale. You are just there facilitating that relationship and making sure that people like you and trust you and love your work. Okay, but keep going. Don't give up. Just because it's a long haul doesn't mean it's not worth doing. It means that when it happens, it's even more rewarding and you know how much work you've had to put in. Okay, right. I think that's enough chatter for today. So I'm going to leave you to it. Get on with your day. Have a wonderful day. Have lots of fun. Um, if you're interested, I do have my Facebook Five Fabulous Top Tips. I think I've messed the order of the title up. But I do have that available. And that actually is all about building relationships with people and keeping it going and having that engagement and conversations with people. So please feel free to click the link below. I'll pop it somewhere. Um, I might even pop it up there if I can't remember how to do it. Um, so yeah, we'll have a click, sign up, grab my five top tips, and actually you'll also get a series of short videos for, from me about each tip as well. So it's not just um, my five top tips, it's, it's actually a short video series, so it's even better. Um, and it's all free. So grab that if you haven't already, and if not, I'll see you next week. Oh, and if you really want to, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, and then you'll be told every time a new one of these is available automatically. Okay. Thanks.